Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for another exciting event in the Rutgers University Alumni Association Summer Event Series. I'm Kavita Howe, Director of Entrepreneurship Partnerships in the Corporate Engagement Center, the front door to all things entrepreneurship at Rutgers. We are working to bring visibility to Rutgers entrepreneurs, connect them back to the university community, and to people and resources to help them build and grow their businesses. One of the most exciting parts of this role is we're working with Rutgers entrepreneurs and reaching out to Rutgers alumni who have gone out into the world to create their own exciting companies. And our featured speaker is one of these alumni. Dr. Juan Salinas is a triple alumnus with a bachelor's, master's, and PhD in food science from Rutgers. After graduating from Rutgers, Dr. Juan worked at multiple food companies, including with brands such as Kraft, Nabisco, and Nestle, where he worked on the development of snack foods. Like many entrepreneurs, Dr. Juan recognized a gap in the market and decided to do something about it. He founded Perfect Life Nutrition, a company that created the PNUF line of healthy plant-based snack foods for active lifestyles. In 2018, Dr. Wan and PNF won first place in the Rutgers Business School business plan competition. And then in October of 2020, Dr. Wan appeared on ABC's Shark Tank show and won a $400,000 investment from Mark Cuban for his company. We'll share a link to the Shark Tank video with attendees after the event. Today, Dr. Wan will tell us more about PNF and also talk about nutrition and fitness for people with active lifestyles. This session will be recorded and we'll send you a link after the event. And there will also be an opportunity to ask questions after Dr. Wan's presentation. And now it is my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Wan Salinas. Hello, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Juan. Thank you, Pavita, for the introduction. I'm always very uh, happy to participate in any Rutgers event. So I thank uh, all of you at Rutgers for uh, the invitation. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited today because we're gonna talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is uh, nutrition and specifically for active lifestyles. So this really means all of us, unless we are always in the couch and just being a couch potato all day long, um, this will apply to you. So hopefully um, you'll get a lot out of it. And um, at the end of the presentation, there's gonna be information about how to contact me. Uh, so if there's any questions um, after we're done, I'll be happy to, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, afterwards as well. So I'm gonna start by uh, sharing my presentation. So um, again, I'm gonna talk about the nutrition for active lifestyles. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, in terms of education, I have a PhD in food science from Rutgers. Um, I, like Pavita mentioned, I worked for a lot of different CPG companies prior to starting my own company. And I was a food product developer there. Uh, but I always have a lot of um, interest in sports nutrition. So uh, I also got certified as a sports nutritionist from the International, International Olympic Committee. Um, and also have a, a personal trainer certification from the uh, AFAA. Um, in terms of uh, my own personal development, uh, I'm sorry, uh, personal accomplishments, I should say, uh, I'm a professional natural bodybuilder. Um, I'm also, uh, I was also, uh, previous member of the Honduran national swim team. Uh, that's when I was a teen. Um, and lately I've also been uh, doing a lot of competitive triathlete events, um, including marathons and cycling events as well. Um, and uh, as, a as a professional accomplishments, uh, like Pavita mentioned, I started my own company, it's called Perfect Life Nutrition. And we develop healthy snacks uh, under the brand of Peanut Crunch. Um, and I was also on Shark Tank, so uh, that was pretty cool. And um, 
Davida will share that link with you uh, at the end of the presentation. All right, so let's get started. Um, how do we reach your fitness goals? You probably all heard about the 80-20 rule and that says that 80% of the weight loss or gain is the result of making healthy life change, healthy uh, changes in your diet. And the other 20% is just being physically active. Basically what this is saying is you gotta pay attention to your diet, maybe even more so than the exercise, which a lot of us don't think about. We think about going to the gym and sweating. Uh, we think the pounds are gonna come off, but we forget about our nutrition. And in reality, they go hand in hand and, you know, even more so we should be paying attention to our, to our diet. Um, there's a saying also that says that your abs are made at the gym, but they are revealed in the kitchen. And so this is the same idea about the 80-20 rule. Uh, it baffles me that, you know, up to seven years ago, even NFL teams didn't have um, nutritionists and staff, sports nutritionists and staff, um, but now they're realizing the importance of it. And now I believe every single team professional has uh, a nutritionist um, in their staff. Just some, uh, a few concepts and principles I'd like to explain to you first before we get into the thick of it. Um, and it's about maximizing your workout results uh, and your nutrition results. The first uh, principle is about the energy balance. You probably heard about this. And that's, that, uh, that's the principle that says that there is a balance between the energy that you put in, and these are the calories that you consume basically by eating, minus the energy that you put out. And this is basically the energy you spend by exercising or, you know, basically being, being yourself. You know, when you're sleeping and breathing, you're actually spending energy. So if your uh, energy is equal, your energy in is equal to your energy out, then you're gonna be in complete balance. What that means is that your weight will stay the same. So in, if you start eating more than what your balance is, then you're gonna start gaining weight. And if you start eating less than what is your balance, then you're gonna start to, um, to lose weight. So in general, thermodynamics tells us that 3,500 calories is equal to one pound of body weight. So in other words, if we wanna lose a pound of body weight, then we need to cut down 500 calories a day from you know, your normal weight, your steady weight. So I hope that's uh, understanding. And uh, it's a pretty cool principle because it's the base for anything uh, related to weight gain and weight loss. The next thing is about exercise. Um, it's about the adaptation rule. And that is that rule that says that you need to push yourself basically in order for your body to get accustomed to that new uh, load that you're putting into your muscles and so that it adapts to it. And so the next time is able to handle the same load. This is how muscle grows. This is why muscle gets bigger when you work out. Um, and of course, you know that there's different types of exercise. We're gonna talk about aerobic versus anaerobic. Aerobic is, you know, uh, it's related to oxygen, more consumption of oxygen when you're exercising. This is when you're walking, running, uh, doing some other kind of aerobic type of exercise. And weightlifting is the opposite. It's more of an anaerobic exercise, uh, consumption of less oxygen, um, as, as uh, you know, with, with lifting weights in the gym, for instance. Um, metabolism is basically your energy expenditure through the day. We talk about having a high metabolism. You say, you know, a lot of people say, hey, you have a high metabolism because you're skinny. Uh, really what they're trying to say, hey, it seems like you could eat anything and you burn it off because your metabolism is very high. You're always spending energy. And there's a little bit of truth about that. Um, and I'll talk about this uh, in terms of having more muscle increases your metabolism. So having more muscle is gonna help you burn more calories just by standing without having to do anything. So building muscle is very important. 
versus aerobic exercise that is more about spending energy only when you're doing the exercise and not necessarily after. Um, the next uh, principle is about nutrition is that I'm going to talk about is just the difference between micronutrients and micronutrients. Um, we hear a lot about people asking us, hey, what are your macros? And really what they're referring to is, you know, how much protein, carbs and fat are you taking uh, versus micronutrients? And this is the vitamins, the minerals, water. Uh, and lastly, timing. Um, one thing that you got to keep in mind always is that your body is never at full rest. Even when you're sleeping, you're spending energy and therefore your body needs nutrients all day long, 24 hours a day. All right, so let's get into uh, protein. Uh, what is protein important? Uh, from a um, active nutrition point of view, it's about building muscle. So protein, it's our building blocks for our muscles. It also helps you repair muscle after exercise. So I mentioned before, the more muscle you have, the more calories you're gonna burn. So your metabolism is gonna go up. So your goal should always be to have more muscle, okay? Now you build muscle with protein. And this is why we hear um, a lot of recommendations about eating protein, especially from people that do a lot of exercise. Um, in terms of how much, we'll say that a sedentary person that uh, basically is one that doesn't exercise as much, uh, that will be about 0.4 grams per pound of body weight per day versus somebody that is more active, um, like a bodybuilder will need more of about, you know, twice as much to three times as much as a sedentary person. So to put in real numbers, if you're a 120 pound person, you're probably gonna need, if you're sedentary, you're gonna probably need about 48 grams of protein per day versus if you're active, you're gonna need about 120 to 180. This is a big difference, right? Uh, again, exercise requires protein in order to continue to build that muscle that you just worked out. Uh, there's these different types of protein. Uh, there's what we call complete versus incomplete protein. And a lot of vegans and plant-based diet uh, or people that are in plant-based diets understand this, um, that incomplete, that incomplete protein uh, is one that doesn't have the nine essential amino acids. These nine essential amino acids are not created by the body, but you have to put them in through food. And some plant-based uh, protein doesn't have all these nine essential amino acids or they're in, not in at the levels that they should, uh, that they're effective. So therefore uh, it's important to understand that because with, the, with a lot of new plant-based products out there, um, it's important to understand if the protein that you're consuming is uh, complete or incomplete, because if it's incomplete, it will not build muscle. It will not build muscle. Okay, now most animal protein is complete. Uh, so that's the differentiation there. Uh, in terms of when you should have protein, um, we'll hear about having protein after exercise. That's absolutely true. And I will add that we need to have protein throughout the day, all day long. And that means if we can eat every three to four hours, we should always have some sort of a protein serving through uh, in every meal. And this is because um, your body after exercise continues to use protein to build that muscle 24 hours after you exercise. So you wanna continue to feed it all day long. In terms of carbohydrates, it's the other big micronutrients. They're important because they are the main source of energy. So the way it goes in terms of source of energy, the way it goes is first you start with carbohydrates. That's what the body wants to use the most then it goes to protein, and then it goes to fat. Okay, so carbohydrates are so important for energy. And your body stores that energy as glycogen. It stores it in the muscle, then it stores it in the liver, and then uh, again as fat, which is not really available. But in the muscle, it's very quickly available. And then uh, when it runs out of uh, carbohydrate in the muscle, then it goes to the liver to, to uh, obtain that energy from. How much carbohydrates do we need? Um, 
That again, it all depends on whether you're sedentary or an athlete, if you're active. Uh, I would say that you need to have at least 50 to 300 grams a day. That's about 50 to 60% of your total macros, okay? Uh, but if you're exercising, uh, obviously you're gonna need some more. Um, if you're doing more than one hour or hour of some sort of a cardio type of exercise, like if you're running a marathon, for instance, then after the hour, you should start intaking at least 60 grams of carbs per hour so that you don't hit the wall. Basically, that's what you know, it's referred as hitting the wall is that you run out of carbohydrates, you run out of energy, and you just like feel like you're dead. So by ingesting carbohydrates during the run, you're gonna keep uh, feed, you know, feeding that muscle with energy and um, 60 grams per hour is, is what's adequate. Carbohydrates after exercise are also important because after you exercise, you deplete it. And now you want to put it back into the muscle where they took it from. So the recommendation is about 0.4 grams per pound uh, of body weight. Um, now, I'm sure a lot of people are asking how much carbohydrates do I need in order to you know, lose weight, for instance. Uh, and again, it, this depends on your body weight and whether you're male or female. But in general, um, you want to have, you want to cut your carbs, you know, to 0 0.15 to 0.5 grams per pound of body weight per day. Okay. So, uh, basically what that means is that, um, if you are, um, if you are a 120 20 pound person, you probably want to be around, uh, 40 grams, you know, 40 grams of carbs per day, uh, which is very low. <laughs> so this is to lose weight, okay? This is not to maintain. Um, to maintain, then, you know, you basically need a little more um, in the range of 500 to 300 carbs, uh, grams per day. Um, now there's uh, different types of uh, carbs. There are simple carbs like sugar, and this is the, the bad carb that we call it because it basically, um, if it doesn't get utilized by your body right away as energy, then it basically um, turns into fat. Uh, you know, it raises your insulin, and then your body wants to turn it as e into storage energy, which is fat. Uh, versus complex carbohydrates, these are carbohydrates that are slow digested in your in your gut, uh, and because they're slowly digested, then they're providing energy consistently. Um, and therefore you don't have that, you know, um, raise in the insulin and then it doesn't turn into fat. So in other words, you want to have more complex carbohydrate than you want sugar. Um, and then, uh, fiber, uh, also important because, um, fibers is one that is a carbohydrate that not necessarily gives you calories if, um, because it doesn't get digested. So, what happens is that if you consume fiber with sugar, then it slows down your digestion of that sugar. It almost like protects it from being consumed so quick and then turn into fat. So if you're gonna have sugar, might as well have fiber with it to help you regulate that um, digestion of it so that you don't turn all that sugar into fat and instead it's used mo in more as a slow, digesting carbohydrate for energy. Uh, in terms of when you need to have carbohydrates, uh, obviously all through the day, you wanna have that storage of energy when you go to exercise so that you feel like you have energy and you can go through your workout nicely. Um, I'll say avoid it before you go to bed, maybe two hours before you go to bed, just because you don't wanna just sit in there and eventually turn into fat if it's not being used. Uh, the third micronutrients fat, why is it so important? In terms of nutrition for active people, to be honest, fat is probably the least important of all. Um, it has a very important role in terms of providing the vitamins, uh, carrying vitamins like A, D, E, and K, which are fat soluble into your body and they're good for cell growth. Um, it's also, uh, there's some certain fats that have omega-3 that are good for joints and arthritis, uh, as well as heart disease. This goes as well with omega-6. 
um, stuff, oils that are found in like fish, for instance, or leafy greens like spinach. Um, but in terms of nutrition for active uh, lifestyles, you want to reduce as much fat as you can of your diet. So being about 15% of your total micros is, is totally fine. Um, make sure that you're consuming, of, of course, uh, the good types of fat, which is the unsaturated with the omegas, uh, instead of the saturated, which um, have been linked to, um, you know, basically heart disease. Um, in terms of the micronutrients, the most important for active nutrition is water and salt. My recommendation is to drink a gallon of water per day, you know, to stay lean. The more water you drink, the more your body is going to try to excrete it as well. So there's a lot of people that think that if you drink a lot of water, then you're going to retain a lot of water. That's not the case. Your body actually wants to get rid of it, and therefore it starts, you start to look leaner. Um, this is something that a lot of models use, uh, a trick that a lot of models use you know, a few days before they go on a photo shoot to look leaner. They start drinking a lot, a lot of water, and then they start going to the bathroom a lot. And by the time they get to the shoot, they're, they're looking very lean. Um, salt, it's, it's a uh, electrolyte. And so it's important for sports uh, and anyone who's, who's exercising. I would say, don't worry about it unless you have high blood pressure um, or kidney problems which in which case you want to keep it uh, under 1500 milligrams per day. But otherwise, um, it's a great electrolyte, you know, and it's good for avoiding dehydration and cramps during exercise. Um, if you don't know whether you get, you know, if you are um, basically needing electrolytes or you're a person that gets rid of electrolytes through the sweat, which is how your body excretes electrolytes out of you, out of you, uh, it's through sweat during exercise. Uh, one quick test is to basically wear something black when you're exercising and you go through the sweating process, like you play and you sweat and they notice if you have sweat marks that are white on your, on your clothing. If you see the sweat marks white, that means that's salt that is being excreted out of your body and then you're what they call it a salty sweater, which means that you are even more required, more important to replenish those uh, salt electrolytes after you exercise. In general, um, the average loss of water during exercise is a liter per hour, and you want to rehydrate by having about one and a half times that amount um, after exercise to hydrate properly. Uh, again, the good ways of uh, replenishing those electrolytes is by either consuming um, sports drinks like Gatorade or even better, tomato juice. Tomato juice is the best hydrating uh, liquid product out there. Uh, but there's also, uh, there's companies that make tablets, you know, electrolyte tablets that you just add to your water and um, it replenishes uh, your body with sodium and potassium. Uh, in terms of uh, vitamins, uh, I will always say just eat your vegetables and fruit. Um, try to eat them whole. Don't try to, um, it's basically to eat the fruit whole than, than juice. And the reason again is for what I mentioned about the fiber. Uh, fruits have a lot of sugar in it. So if you take the fiber out of it, they're gonna be digested very quick and they might turn into fat. Versus if you have it as a whole, then the whole fruit has the fiber and then it will slow down the digestion of that sugar. Um, let's talk a little bit about snacking because they're very important on someone that wants to keep a healthy lifestyle and active. Uh, they're good because they keep your metabolism going. We talk about the metabolism being your, you know, how you burn uh, calories throughout the day. And by having food, it avoids from your metabolism going, loud, going low and staying low, which is what you don't want. Your body wants to slow down your metabolism when it doesn't have food. It's a preservation, um, a self-preservation you know, activity. So you want to keep feeding it just enough so that the, the body thinks that, okay, we're good. We're going to keep this metabolism going. Um, 
The snacking also increases muscle development. I, I explained to you before that you wanna continue to feed protein to your muscles all day long. So a quick, easy way to do that is by snacking. And uh, also reduce the overconsumption of food, which is something that we fall into it when you know we're bas basically waiting for that that dinner, you know, late night, and you know we start feeling really hungry. Our metabolism slows down, and then we start eating everything that we can. And basically, now you did a double whammy because you reduce your metabolism, and now you're overeating. So. Snacking helps you reduce that. Uh, what to look for in a snack? Always look for products that are high in protein, they're low in sugar, low in high glycemic carbohydrates. This is the ones that um, basically uh, get digested very quickly. You want these slow digesting carbohydrates. Um, always look for uh, unsaturated fats rather than saturated fats and always look for wholesome ingredients and simple stuff that you can read um just quickly in terms of how you go about reading um the nutrition facts on a snack here's an example of a cheetos for instance um the first thing that you gotta notice is the serving size make sure you understand how many pieces uh, of the product it's equivalent to one serving in this case, they're saying that there's 18 servings in this bag. So it's a pretty big bag. Big bag. Um, don't be mistaken by having the whole bag and thinking that you're going to get 170 calories by eating the whole bag. That would be incorrect. Basically, uh, one serving is 170 calories. So the calories are per serving, not per bag. So you need to pay attention about these numbers. That's the first thing that you got to pay attention to it. Uh, the second thing is two calories. Um, what's important about the calories is not just the number. Obviously, you want a lower calorie number uh, if you're in a, in a diet or trying to control your calorie intake. But you also need to know where these calories are coming from. So it's important, as I mentioned before, that protein and carbohydrate are the majority of the calories that are being um, served here and not the fat. The fat should be the least. So in this case, you see that there's 11 grams of fat, uh, which is pretty high for a snack because every gram of fat contributes to nine calories. So if you multiply 11 times nine, that's over a hundred. So that's you know pretty much more than half of the total calories of this product comes from the fat, which, which you don't want. The next thing is uh, carbohydrates. I mentioned that before. You can see that in this case, you have 15 grams of carbohydrates. Question is, where are those carbohydrates coming from? So you always should read the, the nutrition fact with the ingredients. Because in this case, you can see that it's coming from the corn mostly, and this thing called my maltodextrin. Um, in both cases, these are high glycemic carbohydrates. So that means that everything every carbohydrate that you eat taken here is gonna act almost like sugar, even though the total sugar is zero. These are high fats digesting carbohydrates. So they're gonna act in your body almost as sugar. Um, protein here in this case is very low, one gram. You want to make sure that you, your snack has at least five grams of protein or more. Uh, and again, the type of protein is important, especially with a plant-based diet you know, make sure that that protein that you're getting is a complete protein. And the way that you figure that out is in plant product products is because um, the way you figure it out is you look for grains and legumes in the ingredients. If you only see one source of um, protein, then it's probably likely an incomplete protein. So if only has corn, for instance, in this case, that would be an incomplete protein and therefore um, it doesn't do anything to your muscles. Now, if you combine the corn here with, let's say, uh, beans, now you're complementing the two proteins and now you're creating a complete protein. 
So that's kind of what you need to look for. You need to look for combinations of grains and legumes, you know, beans and rice, for instance, or corn and beans, that kind of stuff. Uh, again, in the green list, I mentioned it should be simple. You should be able to read everything. Um, as you can see, Cheetos, there's a lot of stuff here that even I as a scientist had to look up. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, preservatives here. Um, MSG, which is monosodium glutamate. You probably heard about that. There's some link to some certain, um, you know, uh, headaches, hyperactivity in kids, uh, artificial colors or red 40, yellow number six. These are linked to cancer and allergies. So, you know, you wanna kind of stay away from all these chemicals, uh, especially if you don't know what, who, what they are, they're probably not good for you. Um, so I just wanted to show our product in contrast, just to show you how, you know, a good snack, clean snack should look like. Um, the calories, again, you know, anywhere between 130 or below is a good amount for, for a snack. Um, and again, where are those calories coming from? You can see the ingredient list here, very short, very simple. Most of it's coming from beans, rice, peanuts, um, which are all wholesome grains and legumes. Um, the total fat is, is less than half of what Cheetos is, for instance. Uh, five grams or below is a good, is a good number. Um, and you can see here that most of it is unsaturated, monounsaturated fat, omega-6 and omega-3. So it's actually a good product for heart, heart health. Um, in terms of your carbs, that's the next thing you should look at. Um, 16 grams is, is not bad. It's, it's a good number because again, it needs to provide energy to you. What you need to make sure is that that energy is not in the form of just sugar, right? So 16 grams of sugar would be really bad. But having two grams of sugar and three grams of fiber, that's a really nice ratio. Like you actually have more fiber than sugar. And like I explained before, the fiber will slow down the digestion of the sugar. So it acts almost as a slow digesting carbohydrate. And the rest of it is coming from the beans, the rice, which is all slow digesting carbohydrates. So everything here in this product is slowly digested and it will not turn into, into fat. Uh, same with protein a great amount of protein, five grams or more is really good for a snack. Um, and again, this is a plant-based product, but if you can see, there's a combination of beans and rice. So you have legumes and grains, and then you have peanuts and rice protein. So that whole combination makes it complete. So it's a really good protein for building muscle as well. Um, again, you just wanna make sure that you understand every ingredient that goes into the product. If you have any, you know, if you have never heard of it, then it's probably something that you should be concerned about. At least um, make sure that you look it up on the internet and see if there's any uh, adverse effects that people have by having some of these ingredients in it. Um, so this is my last slide. Um, I'm just kind of giving a little more, uh, information about our product. It's, it's really great for active lifestyle, as you mentioned before, but because of the lower amount of sugar and the slow digesting carbohydrates is also good for people with diabetes. It's also good for people that have gone through a bariatric uh, surgery because they require more protein with small amounts. Um, it's been proven to be a low FODMAP. This is people that have issues with um, upset stomachs. Um, by consuming certain carbohydrates. So the carbohydrates in our product are, are good for that. Uh, also doesn't cause acid reflux, it's good for the Mediterranean diet, which is based more, it's based on grains and legumes. It's plant-based um, and has been shown to be good for introducing peanut at, to kids, you know, um, provide a, more of a, a, an allergen boost on kids. Um, so that they don't grow up having allergic reactions to peanuts. And finally, because of the uh, oil that we use, which is high in omega-6, then uh, it's also good for our health diet. And with that, I close it up. It's uh, some information here about how to contact me. I think uh, 
there's going to be another slide after the presentation too that will have uh, my information in it um, and uh, there's a discount code here too that i'm providing for this webinar if you'd like to try our product at a 20 percent off Thank you, Dr. Juan. That was great, um, very informative, um, and I'm sure everyone's wondering if they can, if they eat peanut snacks, will they look like you in those first few pictures? <laughs> I'm guessing a lot more has gone into. I that. highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everyone use that discount code. Um, we did get a number of questions too, and um, so I know you touched on some of these points, but. One question that comes up is just if you're trying to lose weight in a healthy way and do it quickly, what are some quick tips for that? How do you lose weight in a short period of time? Yeah, so I mean, I tell you, I, I've done bodybuilding for several years, and the way that I lose weight quickly, and, and to me, that means within a month, is that uh, it's all about your carbohydrates. So if you lower your carbohydrates to a level where you're providing enough energy for you to continue doing your daily activities and your exercise, but not more than that, then um, you, you, your pounds is gonna start to drop. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so really lower your carbohydrates, uh, keep your protein up because you wanna continue keeping your muscle. You don't wanna go through this, what we call the starvation point where you start to eat up you know, your body starts to eat up muscle for energy as opposed to the carbohydrates you're providing. And then you start losing muscle. And then, you know, obviously that's, that's, that's not what we want when we lose weight. Right. And is that different between male and female uh, people who are trying to lose weight? There's, there's small difference between male and female just because males have a little more body mass uh, than women. But in general, um, you know, just go by the recommendations I gave on the presentation, go by body weight, you know, um, if your body weighs 120, just follow the guidelines about how much uh, carbohydrates you should have uh, for weight loss. And um, if you're a male, you know, 200 pounds, then you do the same math and it should work both ways. Okay. So there are also some questions about um, the, to how to eat before and after a workout. Um, so is there, what should you have before and after to maximize results? And in, there was a specific question about if you do more of weightlifting, should you be eating more protein after the workout? And if you're doing more of an aerobic workout, should you be do, eating more carbs after the workout? Yeah, so carbs and protein are both important. So before a workout, the key is just to make sure that you have enough what I was talking about glycogen in your muscles, because that's where the energy is gonna come from. Especially if you're doing more of an aerobic type of exercise, your body is really gonna to try to consume a lot of that energy from your muscle. And I talked about hitting the wall for people with marathons. That's exactly what happens. They just consume all the carbohydrates out of their muscle, and now they don't have anything else. And now they're hitting a wall because they're just, they have no more energy. Um, if you consume, if you're just doing a workout at the gym, for instance, you don't really need to consume additional carbohydrates right before it, you know, whatever you consume through the day should be good to get you through your workout. Uh, but then after you're done with your workout, you want to make sure you have at least 20 grams of protein, regardless of whether it's, it's uh, an aerobic exercise or, um, a weightlifting exercise anaerobic, you want to have at least 20 grams of protein. And if you have gone through a long run, for instance, you wanna replenish those carbohydrates again by consuming a little more carbohydrates after. But in general, unless you're running a marathon or something really like intense, you're not really gonna to need to do any, anything special in terms of carbohydrates to replenish those. You know, your regular snack afterwards and a meal, that should be, that should be good. And do you, uh, is there a preference between animal versus plant-based protein? Yeah, I touched on that a little bit. Um, animal protein, like I was saying, is, is complete protein. It's got all nine essential amino acids and 
they're very good for building muscle. Uh, plant proteins are also good, but you need to make sure that you have that completeness of it, that the plant protein has the nine essential amino acids. The problem is that nature didn't give a lot of plants that have all these nine essential amino acids. So soybeans have it, um, quinoa has it, um, tempeh is another, but you know, beans or rice or peanuts individually don't have it. But what's cool and what we've done here with peanut is that we actually combine the different plants so that now they complement each other and now you have actually a full set of complete of nine amino acids because they're coming from different sources. So as long as you combine, you know, do a perfect, a good combination of the plant protein, then it should be just as good as uh, any other animal protein. Uh, so, and are there specific plant proteins that are good combinations? Yeah, so uh, the, the rule is try to mix a grain with a legume, right? So you can have rice with beans. You can have a tortilla, you know, and so if you have a tortilla with beans, that's good also. Um, so peanut butter, you know, peanut butter and, and bread. So that's, you know, the legume with the grain. So that's how you get complete protein. Okay, that's very helpful to know. <laughs> um, someone also asks, what's the effect of protein on the gut? Um, they say it generally affects my gut health. Any way to mitigate this? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question again? It's about gut health. Um, so they're saying that protein, uh, it must be certain foods with proteins maybe affect their gut health um, or, or irritate the gut. Yeah. Uh, I know you mentioned the low FODMAP. So yeah, maybe maybe it's related, the question is related to low FODMAP. Um, which are fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides and monosaccharides, that's what it stands for. Um, and these are found in, you know, onions, actually garlic, uh, but also, you know, the products that have carbohydrates in it. There are certain people that are very susceptible to it, and it causes a lot of uh, pain in their stomach, um, gas, diarrhea, uh, and other, you know, gastrointestinal issues. Um, what I would recommend is check uh, to see on your diet. Start going in the loft. FODMAP diet and see if that helps. Um, if that's the problem that you're having, then you should follow a low FODMAP diet, which is avoid the garlic, avoid the onions, avoid all those other foods that have that are high in oligosaccharides. Um, again, peanut crunch is really good because it doesn't have any of those. So um, it's certified as low FODMAP. Um, so other, you know, there's other reasons why you gut might feel uncomfortable too. Some people are sensitive to wheat, to wheat, so uh, gluten uh, could cause an issue. But uh, some studies that I read lately have shown that a lot of people think that they have a gluten intolerance. They're actually having an intolerance to the oligosaccharides. So, you know, just double check to see um, which problem do you actually have. Uh, another question, uh, best source of carbohydrates if you want to increase your weight? Yeah, so complex carbohydrates, that's the way to go. Um, uh, you wanna avoid the sugar. Um, you can gain a lot of weight quickly by consuming sugar, but you're gonna, your gain weight is gonna be mostly fat. Um, so what you wanna do is increase your calorie intake, but increase it in a way that you're using that energy for you know, sustaining all of your muscle mass and for creating more muscle mass um, and, and spread it out. You know, spread it out throughout the day. Don't take it all at once, but have it every three hours throughout the day. If you wanna do it six, seven, eight times a day, that's great, you know? So from morning to night. So try to spread out you know, your carbohydrates and. Again, you can use the formula that I put in my, on my um, slide, you know, in terms of how to, you know, what, what's the right amount to use for, uh, of carbohydrates to use to lose weight. You can use, also use it to gain weight. 
and follow the you know 3500 calorie per you know equals to one pound and try to you know kind of work it that way so that you're gaining a pound a week which is a healthy gain weight a pound a week um through the increased in calories mostly coming from carbohydrates so potatoes you know rice you know even pastas are okay Uh, and then someone asks, is fat free really fat free? So, yeah, well, in the US, the uh, FDA um, recognizes a product to be fat free when the fat per serving is 0 0.5 grams or less. So, if the product per serving, right, has 0 0.49 grams then in the label will, will read zero and they could call it as fat-free product. However, you know, if you're gonna eat, if, if the product like the Cheetos has 20 servings in it and you eat the whole bag, then in reality you're having, and this product has 0.5 grams, you gotta multiply that times 20, you know, now you're having what, 10, 10 grams of fat in the product. So the standard, by the FDA standards, you know, fat-free means less than 0 0.5 grams per serving. Yeah. So, so you have to watch those serving sizes then. So it's all about the serving size. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then somebody asked, uh, what are your thoughts on juicing fruits and vegetables? I know you talked about fiber being removed. So, uh, yeah. The cool thing about juicing is that you're concentrating. Right, so you could make, you could put 10 apples into a juice and that's no, now you're getting the vitamins and minerals from 10 apples, which is great. Why the, the drawback of juicing is that you, you know, most of the juicers take away the fiber out of it. So in addition to the vitamins and the minerals, now you're having a really high concentrated levels of sugar also that are coming from the fruit. And all, the, all of a sudden it just becomes just another fruit juice as well. So if you're over consumed, you know, of sugar and you're not really utilizing it, then it will turn into fat. So for me is, you know, try to, I always say, if you're going to juice, then see if you can add back the fiber to it, or, you know, just try to eat more whole foods rather than juicing. But there's an advantage of juicing in terms of concentration and you'll get way more vitamins and minerals, you know, in, in a, in a glass than you would otherwise, because you will have to eat 10 apples to get the same amount. But, you know, for, for uh, the macro balance that we're talking about, it's better to eat the whole food so that you get the fiber with it. So you mentioned something interesting as someone with a sweet tooth, I'm curious if you, if you like sweet things and you're suggesting that you have, when you have sugar, you try and have it in a form with fiber along with it. Are there any, you know, magical snacks or, or combinations that work well for that? Well, I mean, fruits are a natural source of fiber and, and sweetness. Right. So fruits are great. Um, I, you know, there's certain products, you know, I mean, we, our product, you know, I try to do the same thing with our product. I try to provide a little sweetness uh, to it without all that sugar. And, you know, as you see, as you saw in the presentation, we also have more fiber than sugar. So that, so there are snacks out there um, that uh, have that kind of uh, nutrition. You just got to look for the sugar amount, look for the fiber amount in it. And make sure that um, there's hidden, you know, make sure that you know where the carbohydrates are coming from. Make sure that they're slow digesting carbohydrates and not high, you know, high um, glycemic carbohydrate. And you can tell by, um, you can tell by, well, you can look them up, you know, on the internet to see what those are. But um, like corn, uh, you know, it's, it's more a high glycemic than it is rice uh, or legumes usually have very low glycemic index. So you kind of want to start looking more for the grains and legumes, you know, rather than corn or, you know, um, other grains like that. 
Okay. Um, this is an interesting question. Do you know the best nutrition for joint inflammation? Are there certain things that people should watch for? Yeah, so joint, um, I mentioned the omega-3s. Based on research, omega-3s uh, have been shown to be excellent. Um, and those you can get from fatty fish, like mackerel, salmon. Um, if you're vegan, there's also spinach and kale also have that. And I think that they are, uh, they, there are, you know, certain products now that are being fortified also uh, with omega threes, you know, to uh, for for that reason. Um, collagen is another one that you know. There's some conflicting research about it. So in some cases, it's worked. Some others don't. Um, so you know, collagen is an animal source. It comes from the hulls of pigs and cows. Um, you can have it in a more natural form, I guess, if you have like uh, bone growth, for instance. Um, but the science behind that is, is conflicting. Um, it's worked for some people, it works, it hasn't worked for others. Um, and then, you know, calcium, we all know about calcium and bones. Uh, we don't produce calcium, so we have to give it to the body and the body will take it from your bone when it needs it. So we gotta continue to replenish that calcium um, and in order to be absorbed in the body, it has to be with vitamin D also. So you want to combine vitamin D and calcium together to continue to regenerate that bone uh, and keep that healthy. Right. So um, there's also a question about uh, if, you, if you are exercising regularly and eating well, is there any other way to lower cholesterol uh, without using medications? We're getting scientific here. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm not an expert in cholesterol. I mean, I know that uh, omega-6 is really good uh, and has been shown to lower cholesterol. So, you know, products like olive oil, for instance, uh, even peanut oil, you know, uh, are high in this omega-6. And there have been studies that have shown that cholesterol is reduced. Um, I really don't, don't have a lot of knowledge on, on on the medical aspects of cholesterol, but you know, that's uh, something that I can that I know. You know, I've seen scientific reports on that. Okay, uh, so a couple of questions around weight loss, uh, and actually, one is how can men lose belly fat? And someone else asking if I'm trying to lose weight, is stevia okay? So sugar substitutes. Or yeah. Stevia. All right. So belly fat. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's the thing, your body, it's, uh, everybody's body is different. And what happens is that your body tends to store fat, where it genetically wants to store fat. So, um, you know, you've seen people with different shapes, you know, we have pear shapes, we have apple shapes, we have, you know, we have people that tends to gain fat in their arms versus their legs you know, or their stomach. So belly fat is just fat that wants to be stored there in that particular person's body. And the way you get rid of any fat, whether it's the belly or the legs or the arms is basically by establishing a really good um, workout program with a really good nutrition program. And, you know, once you start losing weight, your body's gonna start losing weight especially in those areas where it starts to store, that's when it starts to, to try to take it off. But you will see a, a complete weight loss throughout your body. Um, but there's nothing specifically to say that will target that fat, you know, uh, on a certain location of your body. Um, you can't target weight loss, you know. Um, it's, it's the same with workout. Like you say, hey, you know, I, I have fatty arms, so I'm going to do a lot of, bicep workout or tricep workout and it doesn't work like that you know you're building more muscle behind behind all the fat but you know your nutrition is going to be the one that is going to help you lose that fat and it's going to be a fat that is going to come off the the way the body wants it you know if the if the body wants to lose start to lose weight out of your legs first before the arm that's going to happen regardless whether you you do leg leg workout or you do an arm workout so it's, you can't target workout, 
um, to lose a specific area of fat. Right. And the second question was around the sweeteners. Sweeteners, yeah. So, you know, from from a caloric point of view, and I mentioned the balance, the caloric balance in and out, it's it's what is fine um, because stevia is is a zero calorie sweetener. Um, and therefore it's providing zero calories to that balance, you know? So, um, so I use it, uh, I think it's better than the other sweeteners out there because it comes from natural sources. Um, there's also another one called monk fruit, which also comes from natural sources. Um, but, you know, I, I don't, I haven't seen any adverse, you know, information scientific information that will say that um, that these sweeteners are um, causing issues. Right. So I would recommend it, Swine. Okay, so well, we're almost out of time. There are so many questions. Uh, we haven't been able to answer them all. So we'll encourage people, we'll send, there'll be a recording of this um, presentation and we will send you contact information so that you can reach out to uh, us at Rutgers or Dr. Juan at PNUF. And um, there is one question that I'd like you to answer, which is where are peanut products sold um, so that you can let people know where they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the best way to find us right now across the country is through our website, which is uh, pnuff.com, P-N-U-F-F.com, uh, or through Amazon. Um, we are uh, also being distributed in Canada and the Middle East, if you're there. <laughs> I don't know if uh, you, we have people from there now. But um, yeah, the, the easiest way right now is just through the website and, and Amazon. Okay. So, and everyone can use that discount code. Um, so we will be sending out information. Um, I'd like to say a thank you to the Rutgers University Alumni Association and the events planning team to, for hosting this event and making everything run smoothly. And thank you to you for all this great advice. Um, it's been really helpful and, and great to hear. So for the audience, we'll encourage you to reach out to Dr. Juan if you'd like to know more about his work or PNF. And um, feel free to contact us for information about entrepreneurship at Rutgers and any connections you might like to make. And uh, I, I think that's it. We're out of time. So thank you to everyone. Have a great day. And thanks again, Dr. Juan. Thank you, guys. Thank you.